corsets have taken the world by storm and when i say the world i mean nigeria because almost every ashwabi style recently has a corset in its design i'm not even mad at it because it's actually a very gorgeous silhouette and i can understand why clients would request it now corsets have been in existence since the 17th century and it's just recently that nigeria started picking it up because of this there's a lot of tutorials on youtube teaching people how to make a corset and the tutorial i'll be following is by style by reme because i like her explanations and she really goes in detail about how to make it now my video is going to be about the mistakes i made the frustrations i went through and you know just vibes now the fabric i'll be using is a satin fabric for the corset and it's this lovely satin the name they call it in the market is excellent why they call it that i don't know but it has this luxurious sheen and it's thicker than dull face or bridal satin i actually prefer this to any other now i'm also going to be using the matching lining nothing too fancy the matching thread and as well as the matching bias now i made two corsets and i used one rule per corset now the boning i'm going to be using is the regular boning nothing too fancy next i'm going to be using wording the medium wording to pad my bust now it has a shiny face and a rough side you can iron the shiny side to your fabric and it will stay put then the other things you need are your measurement tape scissors chalk rulers normal things you use and pins as well to pin your fabric together that plus prayers because <laughs> now the first corset i'll be making is for my sister majorly because her size especially her bust size was the same with style by reme so i just felt let me duplicate it and see how far it's going to work plus the fact that i wanted to use that to learn so <laughs> don't tell her that the first thing I did after cutting out my pattern was to iron hair stay to my satin and this is an advice I will give to anyone who will be using wording to pad any satin fabric. It's best you iron it down with hair stay so that it wouldn't leave this rough surface because I had that issue when I made another dress padding with wording and I regretted it. However, even though I did that, my wording couldn't iron onto my fabric and that was fine because I worked it out so I ironed out my pieces and I'm set <sighs> see joining the pieces together wasn't an issue for me to be very honest and I'm actually going to share what I did that make it easy for me I didn't really need to keep my pattern right on my pieces i was able to really differentiate which piece was which piece it was smooth sailing for me i even had the time to check out or even remeasure my measurements just cross check fine details as i would with any other garment i've ever made before but you know pride goes before a fall and i had already made my first mistake without even noticing and that was joining my cup before I had placed my bias on the bodies. I didn't notice this until after my sister had worn it. Because while sewing, there was no proper closure at that very top at the underbust of the bias, you know. Since there was no proper closure there, the boning completely escaped. <laughs> like a thief right out. And I had to take note of that and adjust it which I will definitely share. Now like the tailor that I am, like every other tailor in the world, I continued to sew into the night. And I would say if you're making it if you're making a corset for the first time, I would not advise you to do that. Please take your breaks. Because as I was claiming stress on my head, you know, 
I made a lot of mistakes. I was having skip stitches because of the bulk seams. I had to undo a lot of stitches because I was making the same mistake. Continue sewing the side, the side of my corset to the undergoes. It was crazy. So please take breaks. Don't be stubborn like me. Take breaks when you need it. I didn't even know what was funny. Even when I thought I had finished the bodies i still made another annoying mistake just see so we have the lining and no oh oh god i'm very cool <laughs> what's the ah this is not fair oh. this is not fair so you mean i'm going to lose everything like this See, hey. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Thankfully, for the last time, I undid that stitch and then I pinned my lining to the main bodies and sewed everything together. Then, from there, it was smooth sailing. I put in the boning, did the basic stuff, you know, put in my loops, sealed the bottom of the corset i ironed everything together and also sewed together the shoulder seams and it was perfect perfect amount it was beautiful i really loved it she loved it she was you know just slaying at the wedding so i was like do you know what maybe i actually need to make one for myself i mean i am successful the first time so i should be successful another time right but little did I know that just because I'm in different cup size, I'm going to encounter another problem. So, I'm still going to perfect my cup size, but here's how it went. let's bring it down a notch my very first tip is to cut your lining together with your main fabric this is because since you'll be adding sewing allowance to each of your pieces it will let your pieces be even and let your sewing allowance be the same what made joining my pieces very easy for me was that I labeled each piece with an arrow facing up now this just showed me direction and help me navigate which is left and which is right and because of that i didn't need my sewing pattern on each of my pieces to be able to tell me what parts goes where okay. Let's together and tom says you know what paul and a little bit more money they require some actually technology but also how smart todd was and so he sees is that he has to be able to prove that this algae and the might of any caveats especially considering the fact that todd now because i couldn't iron my wording onto my cup onto my bust cup i decided to join them with a zigzag stitch with my sewing machine i had the option to use a bust cup but i didn't know what my size was and that would have been another headache Coupled with the fact that I'm not looking for cleavage, I don't really like my cleavage showing. So I needed something that will fully cover my bust and it's settled, I guess. Now, because I had marked my direction on my lining piece, this also helped me to know which part of my lining I wanted to be the right side and which part I wanted to be the wrong side. So I simply looked for the direction that was facing up and lined it together with the notches I also made on my bust point. This just helped me to be able to line my pieces together. Once you combine marking arrows to show where up is and then notches, you'll be able to find your center front or your side depending on the marks you made. <laughs>
my lining is done and I have ironed hair stay onto my front my main fabric now if as you can see even though my hair stays on it you can still see the markings i made that is the arrow pointing the direction of up you can still see it through the fabric so that was also what helped me join my front pieces together now my next tip is to iron your seams flat to tell you or to even stress how important this is from the last clip you saw do you know that it has been four days before i took this particular shot because there was no light nepa just decided to disgrace themselves and that's how important it is because when you iron your seams flat you are going to avoid box seams box seams seams are the bane of my existence while sewing they really annoy me and they can really frustrate you while sewing so it is very important you iron your your seams flat and for your cups as you can see i am using a breast ball or a tailor's ham this will help you properly go into that curves smooth everything out if you, know you are going to be sewing a princess seam you really need a breast ball i made mine myself there are a lot of tutorials online if you want me to make a tutorial i can do that just let me know in the comments but just look how gorgeous that looks just because i ironed them down now the next tip is to attach your bias right after ironing now that your fabric is smooth and straight you'll be able to easily sew on your bias tape or your boning channels whatever you decide decide to use now because i did all of that sewing was very easy and make sure you attach your boning channels right before you attach the cup of your corsets when i was done with my bodice i attached the wording to my bust cups before i sew them onto my main bodies now one thing about basting stitches is that regardless of whatever you're doing it just helps you fix together two pieces of fabric so that they don't move especially with fabrics that are slippery now if you're having any issues with sewing things like that i would recommend you baste your fabric together after that was done i attached the cups to the bodies and whenever i got close to a box seam i made sure that i went over it very slowly because i don't want to have to start coming back one two three five times to be able to just sew one side together i made sure that i went over them slowly now if you look at everything i did it came out so so good i was really happy i was feeling excited you know everything came together really well now this was the part that i was so nervous about because i was already done with majority of the work it was now time to face my fears bulk seam now what i did was the moment i went or i got to an area where there was a bulk seam i simply manually rolled my needle by hand and when i needed more tension or more pressure i used my finger to press down my foot on that seam as you can see just use your hand and roll that slowly at this point slow and steady wins the race and when the thread didn't catch it under i used my finger to press down the foot to give it more pressure and when i got to a point where i didn't need to go slowly i just went on smooth sailing onto paradise and with this i was able to go over my stitching one time i promise you it would save your life it saved mine and this was how it looked like it was really gorgeous i was very very excited at this point and then i attached my lining piece to my main bodice I'm 
so sorry i'm not going really into the intricacies of what i did because a more detailed tutorial by style by reme is up there on the internet you guys should check her out her tutorials are really really easy to follow and instead of just waiting on me you can really check out her channel now repeat after me curves and notches are like gary and granite as long as you sew a curve you have to make your notches because if you don't notch your curve it is not going to lay nicely and now that i made my notches around the top of my corset i went in and hand tacked them down i would have gone over it with a stop top stitch on the lining part of my fabric to be able to let them lie flat but i decided to go in and hand sew them down because i didn't want to be fighting with my <laughs> i didn't want to be fighting with my machine i beg and i just wanted to be sure that they would lay flat and i want to uh, wanted to also like properly direct the amount of you know allowance that would be lying down and wherever i knew that there was no give i went in and i made more notches to make it very flexible so that i'll be able to you know hand tack them down and just just you know a psa to remind you that it's not all the time that you use your machine to sew something there are some points that you need needle and thread you can never do without needle and thread while you sew you know just letting you know when i finished with that i went in with my boning i placed in my bonings in all the channels it wasn't really you know something difficult as long as you file the edges of your boning so that it will be very easy for you to slide them in and they won't tear your fabric make sure you file your boning and make sure you leave half an inch allowance so that you'll be able to sew them down together after i did that i ironed down my fabric and then flipped it over and pinned my lining to my fabric together at the rough side and then i sewed them together when i was done with that i made my notches around the perimeter and flipped it back out then i ironed down my corset and ironed half inch allowance at the edge because i'm going to be putting loops as my fastening i haven't joined the shoulder seams together now i'll be using a bias to make my loop i took the remaining bias i had and i just fold them together and i joined them to make my cord then i cut 10 two inch strips and that was what i used to form my loops now take note of this you need to put a boning at your clasp at the back whatever you decide to use because this will strengthen the back of your corset i will not have this you know bending that i had in my sister's corset because i got too lazy and i omitted it but don't forget to do that make sure you reinforce the clasp at the back of your corset now that was done i was really pleased with it i ironed that down as well and then i joined the shoulder seams together i didn't join them initially because i didn't want them to interfere with whatever sewing i was going to do and when i sewed my shoulder seams together i looped my straps at the back of the corset nothing too fancy it was so easy i was so excited to wear this it looked really nice and i was really really impressed you know i was really impressed now i'm going to try this on and let you guys check it out 